Um, hi everyone, my name is Kim and I'm from South Africa and I run an organization called Fem Projects and we focus mostly on comprehensive sexual education. And I'm Zina, I'm from Nigeria, I work at an organization called the Initiative for Equal Rights and... Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nish, I'm from Jamaica and I'm the ED for Transwave Jamaica. Alright, so here we are again. 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 Second time round. <laughs> Just finishing the high level political forum, HLPF. Yeah. What would you say is your most memor memorable moment from HLPF this year? So, I really enjoyed a couple of things that happened at HLPF. One of my big highlights and something that I will take back with me was the action that was taken by the women's major group and other activists in front of the UN to protest the killings that are going on in Colombia. I yeah. think that was such a strong and important point that needed to be made, especially now that we're talking about peace, but it only remains in uh, words, not in action. So mm -hmm. it was important to see those who are most affected by this violence stand up and say enough is enough. And yeah, so that was like one of my highlights for the HLPF. I think another highlight for me, because like for me, obviously, I'm comparing CSW and HLPF a lot because you know these are the two that we've been to so far. Mm -hmm. And what was, I can you can say it ties into being memorable, was the fact that this time around it felt like, well, for me, especially, it felt like I could manage my time. It felt like I had more space to move, and like I knew what I wanted out of it. I mm -hmm. felt that last time, even though I had an idea coming in. I didn't know really what I was doing and my, my strategy and my advocacy wasn't as focused as I made it this time. So I think the growth for me was very, very important and I have to highlight that. I think that as an emotional um, memory is very important. Mm -hmm. How we can navigate our time better and yeah, understand the space better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I have to go with um, my contribution to making the intervention at like Jamaica's mm -hmm. VNR. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's a voluntary national review because Jamaica was up for review um, this year. Mm -hmm. um, having been able to help create the, the actual, actual message yeah. um, and contributing to the content of that um, was pretty significant, but that's something I can now take back and um, you know do some activism around and be a little bit more involved in the process. So mm -hmm. having more um, in being in the space and having the language, you know, you know, you don't always get a chance to create an impact yeah. in, in that sort of a way. The space is not very accessible to civil society and um, NGOs in general. So even as the, the space is shrinking, I think we had the great opportunity to play a role yeah. in, in more and small ways. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so I think that's pretty great about the UN Fellowship. Yeah. And it was cool to hear you speak as well. I mean, you were all there cheering you on, so Appreciate that was it. great. <laughs> yeah, and that camaraderie is very important to the process. So it's, yeah. we know that even though, you know, ocean separates us, the, the fellowship that we have as UN fellows helps yeah. us to, you know, to help each other yeah. um, feel a little bit more settled and connected. Exactly. So that's really great. Yeah. 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 As much as um, HLPF was smaller and a little bit more focused, I kind of miss the chaos that was uh, CSW. Sure. There was a lot more networking opportunities. There were a lot more people that we shared the same values with, we yeah. were doing similar work. So I kind of miss that craziness. Yeah, but I feel like you have to come to CSW like a couple of times to really feel it. So I feel like when we came here the last time, wow, I didn't know what was going with. I was looking up, down, or straight forward. Like it was. It was, there was like so many mad. whole side events to attend, that, right? There were so many days that I didn't know which ones to attend. Like so many, like so many great things going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot different this time. Yeah, like this there time they, you you couldn't even go to many events. Like you, they had like these sluts, like morning and then yeah. afternoon sessions and then late afternoon sessions and they're all going at the same time. So you have to choose. It was yeah. a different setup. Yeah, different yeah. access, different mm. priorities. Mm. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think if that's kind of a bit of a challenge. It's a, it's like a benefit of having a little bit more space and time to navigate and be more focused. But also it's challenging that there are not as many people, activists, who we connect with um, and who are hosting events. Yeah, yeah We yeah. can go to to kind of like be in solidarity with yeah, their causes. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's you know, a downside. That's a, exactly. Work, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that that was a great benefit of CSW because a, a yeah. lot more people, a lot yeah. more our people, 
you know, so that we can share and connect. Mm -hmm. So not having that, um, you know, yeah. But I think what a downside in, a little bit, but not totally, yeah. because it gave us a chance to be very um, targeted yeah. and deliberate yeah. Yeah. in how we approach and who, you know, how we and use like pre target, like target before you get here, because mm -hmm. that's not something that I did with CSW here this time. I was like, okay, before I got here, I emailed people that I knew would be here, not necessarily for HRPF, but that they maybe live here or they work here or, mm -hmm. you know, there's some kind of correlation between our work and I know there's not going to be HRPF, but they're going to be in New York yeah, City. So the so time allowed us to be intentional. You can be intentional. Mm -hmm. Before yeah. you get to you email them, you set up like, a, okay, cool, we are both interested in meeting each other. So you don't only have to use the space for you know, the age of only the conference. You use your after hours time, go for that meeting, meet with people outside of the space. Um, what do you think was your biggest challenge though? Oh gosh, I think he was just seeing how uninterested the main HLPF event was in just- um, How what? How uninterested like uh, the UN and the States and HLPF as a whole, the machinery, how uninterested it is in civil society and our role that we play and it's almost like I've said this in, in the past. It was almost like they were uninterested in anybody else's um, participation. So for me, that was like it was interesting to see shrinking civil society spaces in action mm -hmm. because even the few um, side events that were happening were given to people at late hour slots where most people are already tired or are leaving mm -hmm. or cannot have yeah, access yeah. to the UN because the UN closes at six p.m. and those were the slots that people were getting. And apparently, um, civil society was made to pay for. Security. After working hours of security, yeah. the yeah. security officially stops working at 6 yeah. Mm, yeah. And so that was, I was super surprised mm. at that and really, really disappointed. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, challenge. I think, piggybacking off what you said, the challenge for me is that even in the, the side events and all the meetings, there wasn't enough time for conversation and discussions. Yeah. Um, so it was almost like it's a checkbox, you know, like, okay. We have this side event that we're going to talk about the SDGs and we're going to talk about Goal 7 yeah. and Goal 17, you know, but we're not actually engaging and getting feedback um, in a space where, you know, experts and, and people who have flown all over the world, yeah. you know, to yeah. be in a space because of their interests and because it's, they're passionate about it, it's their mm -hmm. work, it's, it's their livelihood, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. their livelihood. And so having a space like that that's so very important and allowing five minutes for, com for discussion or feedback from mm -hmm. yeah. your you taking on specific yeah yeah, yeah. you having half an hour for your presentation and only taking like two questions yeah. you know it's not very constructive it kind of makes yeah. you think like is it done deliberately but then in the yeah. same breath i went to a few side events where that was not the case um i went to especially the events a right based approach to menstruation within water and sanitation etc and the sustainable development goals they were great. They, I think they took like three or four rounds of questions. And I mean, I left after the third round, so it could have continued. And they would take one round from the audience, one round from the live streaming, and they made sure that everyone's, mm -hmm. wherever they were, you know, got mm -hmm. their say out there. So I must say, when it comes to that event, um, they did great with how they managed their time and how they ensured that, you know, there's a equal distribution of questions, whether that be mm -hmm. online or offline. Um, yeah, for me a challenge was because this was so much more chilled than CSW, I think there was a moment in time where I could have flipped to the other side where I became too chilled and kind of just like, Wah. you know, um, but I didn't flip that way, which is good because I got myself right. But um, like it, well, it's very, it's so chilled that you have to like ensure that your energy and your advocacy is so on point, your strategy and advocacy rather is so on point that you don't steer from, from it. Um, like you just need to see it through mm. so yeah just just keep that so I think it's a good going. thing that they get us to write our strategy and our plans yes. at the very beginning yes. and then you hold yourself accountable and, yes. and that's what ended up happening because yeah. we, we typed mm. it out you know it wasn't yeah. only the printed one so I could be like okay wait I haven't had this meeting why haven't I followed up oh okay let me follow up and then mm. we actually had the meeting so you know it's yeah yeah because yeah, I mean as you and fellows is we have to treat this uh, with utmost respect and assume responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've done a pretty great job yes. of, of doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honoring the opportunity of um, being here and being able to participate. So, you know, the chill space is 
yes, it can be a double edged sword. Yes, you know, yeah. but I think because of who we are and because we're passionate about the work, we exactly. put the work in and ensure that even in the chill spaces, we're doing what we need to do. But also making sure that I think self care, I think we're, for me personally, I was much better at self care um, than, I, than I was. Yeah, but you had a lot of growth. issues. Um, last time yeah and even this mm-hmm. time i still wasn't feeling 100 percent. yeah i hope the next time i do this video <laughs> you know i can say that i've never had a migraine you know like i'm looking forward to that but yeah you know yeah i, I like that you know we could have been like hey you know sahar you know, we're gonna take some time to do this today or do that or yeah gonna, yeah you know not every day be at the un if it wasn't mm-hmm necessary yeah you know so like that was i think that was again great. time management was yeah. easier last time i wanted to be everywhere my first time overseas was first time in the un i wanted to be there all the time and then yeah. i nearly was like ah! like yeah. <laughs> you don't even know who you are anymore so yeah 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 so, so progress already progress. progress yeah so i think like all of these experiences that we've had they kind of culminate into advice for next year's cohort because we are the first people who um applied for this uh, fellowship and we, we, we got it and next day we'll, there'll be a whole new group of people and I think they can learn from these videos yeah. so what would your advice be uh, like for the new people trust the process I think that fundamentally outright has done a really good job thinking this through from the very beginning and um, in the way that uh, the days are channeled how you're made to plan out what you want to do from the very beginning mm-hmm. and figure out where you fit into in this huge massive space mm. I think it's very important and you need to trust the process mm. and also don't get overwhelmed like we did yeah. it's hard to say but yeah. you're gonna have to figure it out yeah. yeah come with an open mind and don't assume that you have to be an expert yeah you know um, you know come to learn to share mm. yeah. and um, to give your own context as well yeah. um, you know and make the most of it like yeah have some idea of what you want to get out of it you know as a baseline but don't you know don't make your expectations so high that you you don't you disappoint yourself yeah, in yeah, yeah exactly so can I like, just yeah and, and trust your lived experience as well I think that's something that I also learned here like trust what you know trust what you've experienced mm-hmm. and yeah, come to learn from other people's experiences, what they've learned, and um, yeah, and as I mentioned earlier on, okay. set up things for yourself, you know, you don't have to come fully prepared with like, on oh, this day I'm doing this, on this day I'm doing that, but come prepared with an idea, do research on people who live here, do research on people who work here, can you meet with them, send that email, yeah. like, if you're not going to send that email, you won't know who you can meet with, and yeah. the worst that can happen is they say, nah, we're not interested, and the mm-hmm. best thing that can happen is, they send you through to like top management, which is what happened to me. So (laughs) also I think one of those that I need to put on the table is um, whenever you take a card, make sure you send that email immediately. What are you talking about? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. a business card, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We met a couple of people who were interested in funding some stuff (laughs) from the last time and we did not follow up and Mm. we could not remember the people. No, but yeah. I've got a name. I got a name. Now I just need to go Google, do some SPI stuff. So I'll true. find that name. For Case in point, <laughs> proving the point is that send the email right away. Yes. So you say, hey, you know, we met. Just, you know, thank you for meeting. Yeah. It was nice Paper to trail. meet you. Paper blah, blah, blah. Um, that yes. opportunity. We'll be, I'll send a follow up email as soon as, yeah. you know, since Asia, you know, the event is do over. Do not blah, blah, blah. Okay, but I think I this brings it. up another conversation as well. This whole oh, thing yeah. about business cards and taking business cards. Me, ne, Mina, I don't know about this because uh, me, I'm like, can you give me your email address? Give it to me so that I can type it in. I don't like these cards thing because what's going to happen is when I put it into my phone's case, and I'm never going to save it on my phone. Okay, so so I, let's just put the advice as don't procrastinate. Like don't, get, yeah, on yeah. get on it. Get on it. You can take the business card and put directly put information in your phone. <laughs> or there's an app I heard that you can actually get. I have it. Cam card. So then you're, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 Make contact. Yeah. Make contact. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think it's overall though, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's a great experience. Yeah. And I think. At the end of it, we'll, we'll pretty much have really broken down some of the barriers of the how to access the UN system and use yeah. it um, and make it a little bit more, you know, not so daunting. Because I was, I, I never thought that it, 
you could we could just walk in. Yeah. Okay, I mean, yes, it like is ID. Swipe we can swipe in. Like it's like it's not so. <laughs> it's still a little hard it's to get hard, into. But it's not so. This ambiguous body. Yeah. As, as it yeah. could appear to be. Yeah, the machinery is still a bit of a monster, but there are ways to find and yeah. to work within those spaces. Yeah. And there are so many people to collaborate with. For me, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. You will meet so many amazing people mm -hmm. who are doing so much great work, and it's just yeah. how to find a way to plug into that. Yeah. And, uh, and then lastly, have fun. I think that's a simple thing. You can't not have fun while you're here, yeah. whether you're working or whether you're, you know, after hours. And, yeah. and for me, it's a testament to the work that Outright has done to create opportunities for people like us and to show their networks and partnerships and how it works and how we can fit into it. It's just yeah. really, it's really good. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Have, have fun, fun. Chill. Have fun. Enjoy the process. Take it easy. <laughs> Make the most of it. Yeah. All right. So it's a wrap for us um, yeah. at HLPF. It's been great. Um, Sure, other people want to say some stuff, but I think um, for me, I hope to see some people at Advocacy Week, which is at the end of the year in December. Yeah. Applications are still open. At least you can find information at outrightinternational.org. I think the link will be down below, so you can embed it <laughs> <laughs> and please go and apply because we're also going to be there and we're pretty cool, so we can like hang out and, and we can show so you around. Many amazing people to collaborate with, <laughs> yes, so. especially yeah. us. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.